I'm Callum and today I'm going to be showing you around the Eldest Signature 155 2019 model which is exclusive to Time Valley Motorhome. Back in the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera underneath. You've got your bike rack so you've got a three band bike rack. So wheels through on the channeling and put the straps through the spokes and these through the crossbars. So, um, this being the first bike, second, third, and then the clip up, just back up, just make sure it is clipped into there, and then you can put the arms down for added security. Underneath this is your battery locker, so this opens with the Trimark key, so the square key. Put that in there, turn, and it will open. And then in here you've got your leisure battery, and your main super point. always hook the van up first and then to the site because we don't want you walking around with a live lead in the rain and then you can put the cable through the groove and lock it so it stays shut next to it you have your fresh water so this is your fresh water intake and you can open it with one of the round keys on your on your keys there and then open push in and turn Basically, put a hose pipe in here until it overflows so you can see the levels inside. Next to it, you've got your toilet. So this is where you do your business, this is where your business ends up. And to access the cassette, make sure the slide on the toilet is shut and then you can pull it, the cassette out like so. Got wheels there to wheel around the site once it's full. When they're empty, take the cover off. Press the button, go to your waste disposal point. It's normally beside your toilet block. Empty the, the cassette. Once you've emptied it, put some water in, give it a slosh around and empty again. And then you can either put a cap full of liquid if you are using the liquid form. So cap full straight into the cassette or if you're using the tablet, form a pint of water in here and then drop the toilet tablet straight into the cassette via the toilet. Going round your passenger side of the vehicle, at the back you will put your external gas point. So this is where you keep your um, external barbecue or kadak tube. So to do that, take the rubber grommet off, get your spigot. You'll need a spigot which just clips in here with a Jubilee clip securing it onto some gas pipe and the Jubilee clip to secure it onto your Kadak or barbecue. Once you're ready to use, just turn it on like so and it will give a feed of gas from your main gas on board the vehicle. Next to your gas, you've got your under storage bed on your 155. So this is your under storage locker where you can keep your bits and pieces in and you've also got your boiler your sorry your space heater reset button which is in between these two ductings here and you put push down and i'll show you now the small red button here so there you have your red button just there. Press that if your space heater, which is your air blown heating, fails. This is your, this is your LPG locker, locker, so liquid petroleum gas. These lockers do open just with the Trimark key, like on the rear. And then in here you can fit two six kilogram gas bottles. So once you have put your gas bottle in, strap it in, hand tighten, left hand thread, hand tighten it as tight as you can get it. No need for a spanner and then off and on at the top of the bottle. When traveling, we do advise you turn them off. But 
your awning and your awning laid up there. And then coming down to behind the passenger door, you've got your diesel, sort of open your diesel tank to fill, use the main Peugeot key. And then underneath you've got your AdBlue. So AdBlue is a 20 litre tank, it will come up on the dash when it requires AdBlue, it will give you a mileage countdown. Um, as soon as it comes on, just top it up, it's the easiest way. You can get this at most um, petrol stations now, fuel stations, as most new engines require add blue, especially diesel engines. On this lamp pedal in the passenger door here, you've got your tyre pressures. So 5 bar on the front, 5.5 bar on the back, or 72.3 on the front and 79.5 on the rear. Underneath your passenger seat, you have your tool kit. So in there, you've got a jack and a brace, a tow and eye, and a screwdriver. So anything that you need to change the wheel, and the wheel is located underneath the back of the vehicle. And then your engine battery is underneath the floor. So you lift this panel to get to it if you ever have to change the battery. But if you do want to jump start the vehicle, Open the bonnet, which this is your bonnet release. The bonnet secondary catch is just underneath the turbo badge. And put the stay on. You've got your weight plate from when it was converted into a motorhome. So it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a trailer on, you can tow an extra two ton front and back axle weights. And you've got your chassis number on the window there. This is your earth for your jump leads so charger or jump leads, earth it there, positive, put the key into here, lift this cover back and you can put your positive onto here. Coming further back you've got your paint code, so this is a Jura Blue paint exclusive to Type C Motorhomes but it is just a standard um, Peugeot fade colour and that's your paint code oil filler and your dipstick for checking your levels and then you've got your brake fluid your radiator fluid this cover lifts off to fill these up and the main one you're going to want is your screen wash on the driver's side of the vehicle you've got your fridge vent covers here so you can put covers on in the winter to protect the element of the fridge coming back you've got your Truma exterior shower so the pump must be on inside the van and it is just a cold water feed what you need to do is you need to pull the bung out. You then have a fitting that fits on this side, two holes and a trigger gun. So this is good for the bikes, the boots, the kids, the dogs, anything that you need to clean. Coming back behind the passenger, the driver's wheel, sorry, you've got your waste water and your fresh water. So your fresh water the back if you want to drain off you drain off here and your wastewater is all the water you've used so your dishes water your hand waste water and if you've showered in the van they, this all goes to a hole in the tank underneath so with these two taps you need to drive over a grid which normally the motorhome um, service be on the way out of a site or if you are on a smaller site it could just be a gully or a hole in the ground and basically open them up and, it, and this will drain off your wastewater and your fresh water with your, fresh, with your fresh water, what you'll want to do is, if you are going to a, um, a motorhome site, you can fill your water up there. You don't want to carry water with you. you a minimum, uh, well a maximum, sorry, of 20 litres you want to carry with you. To stop off, use the toilet, um, have a cup of tea, because it keeps the weight down in the vehicle and also improves the fuel economy. But in the winter, you want to drain both of these taps off as you don't want the water to freeze in the tanks and pipes underneath as it will cause damage. Once inside the vehicle, this is your main electrical switch panel. So to put, you've got a master switch here, so this puts the power on. Either 12 volt if you aren't hooked up or if you are hooked up on a main site, you will have two 30 volts running round and you'll be able to use a standard three pin plug which are located around the vehicle you've then got your main master switch for your light and then they are all individually switched awning awning light is above the door 
So if you are sitting out in the awning on an evening, you can put that light on. Or if you are, um, if you if you have decided to go for a walk, and it gets a bit dusk, put that on before you leave, and you'll be able to find the way to your vehicle. On this side, you've got your pump, so you must have the pump on to surface the tap. All your taps inside, your shower, your exterior shower, and your Fedford toilet. On here, it shows you the voltage of your leisure battery on top. So at the moment, we're hooked up and it's showing 14 volts. Once that hookup is taken out, it will get a, give a true reading. And then underneath, if you press this button, you've got a water button. It shows you your water levels at the bottom. So we've got about a half a tank of fresh water on board. This switch here, the tank heaters, is only for when you are in a colder country or in using the vehicle in the winter. When there's going to be frosty, you can put the tank heater switch on and it basically puts a, a current through the water to stop it freezing. Coming down, you this is your wheel heating and hot water. So you've got hot water and heating. So tap is the hot water, van is the heating. So at the moment, they're both off. To put them on, press the button. So it'll go off. One wiggly line is one kilowatt of electric. So you may have to use one kilowatt of electric to heat your water if you're on a smaller site. But if you press again, two kilowatts is the normality. You can use this when heating your water. So heating your water on electric, two wavy lines, two kilowatts. You've paid your site fees, you don't want to waste your gas. But if you are while camping, you will have to go to gas only. So this heats your water on gas when you are not hooked up. And then if you go again, you've got gas in one kilowatt and gas in two. Gas in two kilowatts, you would use more. This is for if you wanted to have hot water quicker. Say you are in desperate need of a shower or you had some dishes to do. Um, you can put gas in, a, gas in two kilowatts of electric together. So you're using a bigger source to heat the water in a quicker time. So this will probably take about 20 minutes to get your water hot, whereas electric on its own would probably take about half an hour. Coming underneath, you've got your heating. So if we go through again with the heating, you've got one kilowatt, two kilowatts of electric, three kilowatts of electric. So don't waste your gas, use your electric if you are hooked up. Gas on its own, so gas on its own would be heating the van if you are wild camping or you are stopped off at a service station and you wanted to rest for half an hour or so, you could put, put the heating on. You've then got gas in two kilowatts of electric. So this is in the winter time, if you want to heat the van up quicker, you don't want a cold van, you can put gas and electric on together and it will heat the van quicker. And then your plus and your minus, your temperature so top is about 30 middle is about 15 you'll hear the heating kicking in there if you do have a problem and you get an exclamation mark next to here this means a, there has been a failure you can reset the panel by touching whatever so say the the hot water failed and there was an exclamation mark here to reset the hot water you press hot water and the plus button together and this resets or if it was a heating you do the same heating and the plus button you do have a reset button for the heating underneath the bed which i've shown you from outside and i'll show you your hot water drain and your hot water reset button to make the front bed into a double bed so from the lounge just pull the slats out underneath together and then use the backrests in the middle to fill the space but we it is better if you turn all the cushions to the back right so the back so you get the fabric instead of the bull nose as this is a flat surface and you can sheet this with a fitted sheet and it is more comfortable to sleep on underneath your driver's side bunk so this is just behind the driver's seat if you lift the bunk up you then have your winterized tap so this is a very important tap and in the winter when you don't use the van or you say you're using it for the weekend um you want to drain 
when it's standing you want to drain the water you don't want to leave any water standing in the vehicle when it's when the frosts about as it can freeze the water in the um, water heater and this wouldn't be covered by warranty as it's your responsibility to ensure that all water is out the vehicle so to do so once it's a once it's across the vehicle it's holding water turn this to the back of the vehicle leave it open come in without the pump on without the power and turn it and the water just cascades underneath the chassis leave it open when you the vehicle is standing so from about from when you stop using the vehicle for the season or in the colder climates you want all the water out and then you would open all the mixer taps and take the shower head off and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray to stop any water sitting in the u-bend in freezing at the back here you have another reset button so you've got a reset button on your um your space heater you have a reset button which is the red button here on your water heater so if your water heater was to fail you can reset it but the best thing to do is is to turn your heating and hot water off allow it to on the control panel which i've just shown you allow it to stop the fans so wait until the fans completely die off before you hit your master switch switch button on your eldest control panel this allows the boiler to do its full cycle of shutting down and it won't be interrupted. So to make your rear travelling seats up, which are located underneath your lounge, take the, the cushions off and then put them onto the double bed at the back. Lift the bunk up. You've then got two clasps underneath here, so you need to push the, the board up, push in, Allow it to push down and click it back as you don't want the seat to catch on the wood and mark it. And then you have two levers, so you've got the backrest at the front and then you've got the base at the bottom. So we'll just... All you need to do is play around with the levers until you get the seat up. And then there is your traveling seat. You've got the same on the passenger side. Your kitchen tap, make sure the pump's on on the main control panel. And then you've got a mixer tap of hot and cold. And then you can turn it on. Your water will, to prime your water, it will cough and splutter if the boiler drain has been open until you get a steady flow like so. And there, that's lovely and warm. The steam's coming off that as it's been on gas and electric and it doubles operate the... your dometic fridge with freezer compartment you have three sources so this is off turn it down to 230 volts so this is when you are hooked up so this is when you're either hooked up at home or you're hooked up at site on site you can operate the fridge on normal electric turning down the battery this then gets a feed from the alternator when the engine is running, only when the engine is running. It will keep the temp temperature of the fridge the same. It will maintain the temperature. It won't increase or decrease the, t the temperature. But the idea here is to pre-cool your fridge either on gas or electric prior to your setting off on your trip or if you have been to one site and you're going to another, put on a battery and it will maintain the temperature and keep your shopping nice and fresh. Going down to gas, so if you are well camping, you will have to use gas. And to use gas, you press your temperature and your piezoigniter together, and then this orange band. Once it goes into the green, you you release the temperature and igniter, and that is lit on gas. This is your temperature, so you've got warm going to cooler, cooler, cooler. You will have to um, put, change the temperature accordingly at the time of year. So in the winter, you don't want it on full. Um, the coldest setting as the back of the fridge will be pretty cold so you can have it on the middle but in the summer you might just to keep your fresh your shopping fresh Inside your fridge you've got a removable freezer compartment which re removes by removing the clips underneath here should you require the extra fridge space and in the winter 
or whenever you've stopped using the van and it's standing for a couple of months clean the fridge out you can then buy these fridge air fresheners to keep the fridge nice and, and smelling nice but if you push this in and slide it along like so until these come out this stops the door from shutting fully and allows air round to stop mold and bacteria growing in the fridge here you have your three burner gas rings and one electric hot plate only works when you are hooked up on mains electric so that's the back one which indicates by the red light so you've got one to six on the back of then you have your use the igniter on the front of the oven you've got one two three burners lit if you have had the gas or the electric on please allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below you've got your grill so spark that and There you are there. So allow the thermal couple to get warm before you release it or it will just go out like so. And there it's lit. Remove your grill pan and oven shelves whilst traveling or wrap them up as this can cause the most noise when you're on the road. And then below you've got your oven. Below your oven, you have this locker here, and in here has your gas taps. So you've got three gas taps in here. So this one is for your fridge, this one's for your hob, and this one's for your oven. If you've got, you can isolate them like so, should any appliance be leaking gas, but any problems with gas, just to be safe, turn them off, turn the bottle off. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced, the technician will drop test each appliance to make sure it hits the gas criteria. There is another gas tap underneath your front bunk behind the passenger behind the driver's seat for your water heater, and there will be one underneath the bed for your space heater. Next to the wardrobe below the bed at the front, you have behind this panel you have your rcd unit so this is all your circuit breakers when whilst on 230 electric so when hooked up so you've got your charger and your fridge your water heater your boiler your sockets and your main isolation um trip there and below you've got all your 12 volt fuses it is a good idea to go and buy some spare 10s 5s 15s 20 25s blade fuses from Halfords and just carry them so if anything does blow a fuse you can just change the fuse and you don't have any problems. In the wardrobe area this is where your freestanding table lives so it just opens up exactly like an iron board you've got legs there so the legs just open up and then that can stand at the front or it can be taken outside if it's a nice day underneath your awning. You've got your TV aerial here but this vehicle so to operate your TV aerial, you loosen the nut off here, slide your aerial up, and then you can turn the black collar to get a, to turn the aerial round on the roof. But the best advice is to look where the other motorhomes are pointing. When whilst travelling, make sure it is flush on the roof. Pull it down and tighten the nut. This customer has opted to have a satellite system added to the vehicle so these don't come as standard to the 115 signatures so to operate your max view sat system turn on here on the box this then sends power to your your control unit and then you can press up this is sending the astro up and it is it will automatically find astro 2 to change the sats you can go up and down and change them but it's astro 2.8 so astro 28 so it looks like astro 28 in this country and france to operate your avtex tv so this customer has opted an avtex tv press the button into the magic eye it'll go blue on the bottom just here that's the tv coming on
and as this has got a satellite it automatically finds so you don't have to tune it in just make sure you when you do press source here it is on sat so this is off the satellite if it was on digital telly so if it was just a normal 115 without a sat system on the roof you go to digital you press AQT this big orange button here press and hold and it'll ask and you can do an auto tune by pressing OK or should you need should you require a DVD so there's a built-in DVD in these TVs press source and go down to DVD and you can put it in the side there this is how to operate your Fedford toilet so at the back here make sure the pumps on press the blue button You'll get the flush like so this fills the bowl with water and then to deposit your waste or the flush there's a grey lever on the bottom of the toilet here yeah. slide it it will open the trap door and allow your waste into the cassette the, to get the cassette out the trap door must be closed so if it is open you'll not get the box out there the back of the vehicle it must be closed like so and then when the cassette is three quarters full and requires to be emptied and topped up with liquid and replaced this will go red on here and indicate that you have to clean the cassette out and both you've got your drop down sink with that. and then just make sure the cap is folded right the way in and then you have got your storage for all your toilet rays you've got a hanging a hanging rail in here so if you've been caught in the rain with the dogs or you've got wet clothes hang them in here because this is a, this is heated by the um the, the air roll heating and this is the smallest place in the van so it'll get nice and warm and dry your clothes out above you've got your roof vent which you can open either one side if the wind's blown to the other or you can open both both together and then you do have a blackout blind for on in the evening your shower screens pin back here so when traveling make sure they're pinned back because they'll stop them clattering about and then you do have your mixer tap with shower behind and like i said loosen the shower hose off the mixer tap take the head off and allow it to sit in your shower tree when winterizing so operate your truma aventa aircon system use the remote press the on button in the middle This will then flash so this is your magic eye here you can then you use the temp desire temperature so if you wanted it to turn it down to cool the vehicle or you turn it up to heat the vehicle for various fan speeds and various modes so you can heat it at 31 degrees or cool it and you do have your fan speed to turn off so this will only work when on mains electric cook-up and then in the cupboard here this black fuse spur is for the aircon so you can turn it on and off here and then use the remote you also have your plug for your microwave so should you need to remove your microwave you can and it will wake the microwave up press eco and this is only a two this is only works when hooked up as it's only 230 volts now in the cab i will show you the cab controls but first this is how to black the cab out on a night so you've got built-in um folding blinds on both driver passenger and the windscreen so pinch them together and allow the front to slide first and then these just slide out meet in the middle and do take the sat nav off if you've got the sat nav fitted with a style pack or your dash cam or anything in obstructing the blinds coming down to the cab you've got your handbrake to my right here you've got your 
electric window controls here driver and passenger and you've got your electric mirror adjustment so top and blind spot so one two this side and three and four passenger down here you've got your headlight adjustment your fog light and your start stop so with this being a euro 6d engine it has start stop if you wanted to disable that just press so so start stop works when you if you come to a halt you take the vehicle out of gear and you release the clutch the start stop will cut the engine as soon as you put the clutch back in it will restart the engine i just put the ignition on there so on here you've got your trip computer and also your wiper so you've got your wiper speed and your wipers and your trip so you can go through here so it tells you your range your distance your instant consumption your average speed and your traveling times so mute volume scroll through the tracks or radio channels or contacts and you've got your hands free kit there your cruise control speed limiter and can if you want to cancel it or set it you can there and your lights and your indicators six speed gearbox so put your clutch in and lift the collar to work reverse you've got your ESA off ASR off is another word for traction control disabled so if you wanted to disable it see you've got stuck in wet grass you can press that to get out hazard lights locks the cab doors and you've got heated mirrors when it's misty or wet temperature on the outside ring fan speed on the in must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work you've got your where you want the air to go to so your distribution and your circulation either bringing fresh air in or recirculating it Got a USB for charging and a 12 volt there. USB for streaming is here. So if I go to the radio now, your radio doesn't take a CD, but it is FM, AM, and DAB. Once you're happy, you can press one to six to, to save the channels. You can scroll through the channels here. And then media will either be streaming through Bluetooth or USB. Phone, connect your phone, press phone, connect phone, press enter find my car and make sure the pins match it will then ask you if you want to pair your contacts press yes so you can see who calls you it'll, it'll come up with a name instead of a number if the number is saved in your device you can also stream your music from bluetooth and then to turn off you can turn off like so but it does go off with the ignition if i just start the vehicle up You'll see up here, this is your rear view camera. It works when the vehicle is in neutral and all six forward facing, all six forward gears, as well as reverse. On the top box here, you've got, this is heated and cooled by the air conditioning. So if you've got anything, sweets, um, small bottles of water, um, chocolate for on the road, you can put it in there instead of your fridge in the rear. Glove box. And while we're down here, this customer has actually fitted a tracking system. So if you have a tracking system fitted to your vehicle and you have these, these are what's called driver's cards. Do not put them on the keys as it as it looks like you can put them on the keys but I wouldn't advise you to put them on the keys because your driver's card must be with you when you move the vehicle, drive the vehicle otherwise the tracking company will ring you and think the vehicle has been stolen. Keep one in your wallet or your purse don't put them on the keys because whoever takes, if someone pinches your keys they've got a driver's card and that won't alert the tracking system. Also with the style pack you get this Avtec Garmin motorhome pacific sat nav so we'll set that up so it'll ask you what vehicle profile you are so we are a motorhome our height is two so 
So I've put it into meters there. So it's 2.82 meters. And the width is 2.69 meters. And your length is 7.34 meters for the one for the eldest signature 196, also known as an AutoQuest 196. And then you press next. I'll ask you the weight of the vehicle. The vehicle is three point five ton. And then select. You can go where to. You've got your caravan. You can search your place in there. You've got your address if you know the address. You've got your certified sites, your European sites, your UK sites, history if you've been anywhere before. It'll be on there. Um, don't set go home if you wanted to set go home set it to the street or the estate where you live as if someone steals your vehicle they know where you live and that wouldn't be a good thing and to view map you can view where you are as a reference point so we're currently on Fellside Road at Bayamua as we are at Time Valley Motorhomes operate the large roof light above the cab push the buttons in and listen the stairs on the window and then at the top you've got a winder so you can wind it open um, but please make sure when it's travelling it is shut because it is in the sunroof it must be shut, all your skylights and windows must be shut but you do have a fly screen and blackout blind on there should you require any more assistance please don't hesitate to contact 01207 272 treble 7 or you can email sales at timevalleymotorhomes.co.uk